Getting Bon Richard ready for muzzleloading deer opener. William Hovey Smith, 2020. This is Hovey Smith, the backyard sportsman. And it is Friday, the day before the muzzleloading season opens tomorrow. Yeah! So me and Bon Richard are getting ready to go out. Now, uh, we actually loaded up and took it out for squirrels. And we found we had a problem. And that is, our cock tended to catch on the half cock notch of the tumbler. So that was a uh, bump, uh, boosh, boosh, which of course threw off the shot. Hmm. Now if I hold very steadily, I can hold through this kind of thing. But that precludes that I have a rest. I'm not shooting at anything flying. And that the target is basically stationary. Not all of which may well happen. So, uh, we've got to see if we can do something about that. This cock is held with a friction fit to a stud attached to the tumbler. Uh, it doesn't just pull off. Consequently, I'm going to have to use a press to actually put a larger punch on it and gently apply downward pressure and have it the two parts separate. Well, that's easier said than done. This is a fairly robust lock plate. Even so, one does not want to risk bending it or, worse yet, breaking it under pressure. Hmm. So, whilst applying pressure, we are going to use this piece of soft spruce as a base plate and put spacers underneath the lock so that it's supported in more than just two points. So that will tend to reduce the possibility of breaking, though not completely eliminated. So, hmm. So we're going to be about enlarging this hole into an appropriate amount so the tumbler can fall freely through the hole whilst I'm applying pressure, boom, in this direction. For other purposes, I have already drilled a hole uh, through this piece of spruce. So we're going to drill just a small access channel for the saw blade and then use it sort of like a scroll saw to enlarge the hole in both directions. This bandsaw blade is not quite as nimble as a blade on a scroll saw, but my scroll saw just won't cut this thick of material very well at all. So uh, we have made an aperture here, so now we're going to cut and dry and just use chisels to remove these little fingers until we have a, a loose enough fit that that part will just pass directly through when it's free. After our trimming adjustment, we do have clearance on that part. Now we've got a few of those little tabs sticking out and I'm going to remove those but that's more for aesthetic reasons than practical ones. Prior to applying pressure to this part here I'm using metal washers and I'm wrapping with masking tape to support the lock plate on a more nearly level feel so my push with the punch will be straight down instead of at an angle like this. Again, to relieve pressure on this lock plate itself and give a more directed push. I've selected a punch that fits inside this rectangular area and does a very good job of going from edge to edge. There's very little movement in there. So this will give me a good straight down push uh, when I apply vertical pressure. I have one press that has enough throw that I can actually put this punch in at full length without having to cut it or trim it, which I, of course, don't want to do. I'm an author, and mostly of outdoor books on a variety of topics. However, I do have business books. Included in these is Create Your Own Job Security. In this book, I advocate that you start your own businesses anytime, any place, at any age when you need to raise some money, like perhaps right now, and show you exactly how to choose what that appropriate business ought to be. 
This gun was built for use in my movie project, Father of the Grooms, and I'm going to hunt with it here in Georgia and take deer and hogs. I had to make some final adjustments, as you see, by putting some uh, basically cut off 2 by 4 sections underneath our steel support blocks at the bottom so we had enough room to actually work the press. Okay, we are in contact now. All right, things done. The first thing I'm going to do with a tumbler here is to take our file and smooth up these contact surfaces here. So next time I take the hammer off, I don't have to do quite that exercise again. We now have a little part here where it is still a close fit, but I can pull it apart with the fingers and I don't need the press anymore, so that's a good look. Now, to really the issue in hand. These notches this is a full cock notch and this is a half cock that it's sketching on so I'm going to smooth very slightly this edge. And I'm going to see if I can find a fine stone uh, to work it with. This is just careful, slow work uh, until we get it done. It's done as much by feel and look. And a 10 power hand lens is a great asset uh, when examining these surfaces like this to know that you've got them really smooth. I could feel really some rough edges here. So yeah, uh, we're doing some good. I've now polished those contact surfaces to a mirror bright. And so hopefully this should solve the problem. I'm also going to work on the sear just a little bit just to make sure it doesn't have any rough places on it. As apparently it does to scar up the tumbler like this. We're now going to reassemble the lock and see if we improve the situation. Okay, that fits well. Went on and off easily. We're halfway done with assembling the lock on the inside. And you work the hammer like this, that feels smooth. So we've improved the situation. Whether we've solved the problem or not, I don't really know. But that's what the test firing will show. We now have our lock reassembled. And uh, we managed not to bugger the screws. And on the inside of the lock, uh, we are again all together. Uh, one nice thing about this gun is that David Pietasoli gives you a complete set of replacement screws. So if you lose one or bugger one or one falls down in the weeds or whatever, whatever, uh, they give you a set to replace them. So that's a nice gesture. On the gun, I'm going to prick the vent here. Make sure we have a fresh channel way. As this gun was fired yesterday and not cleaned. Okay. Priming powder. More than sufficient. And now we're going to shoot at some aluminum cans downrange at 30 yards. Full cock.
So now we're going to try some pseudo squirrel targets downrange, aka soft drink cans. Okay, I think we killed one. What we found is a tendency for the gun to shoot left, as we have seen before. You see the shot pattern here. I was aiming at this top can here, and it got a couple of hits, or maybe only one that passed through. Yeah, I think that's only one hit. It was right there. So that was on the fringe of the pattern. Uh, most of the pattern went in this direction, although that is pretty thick. So, at 30 yards, yeah, we still need to aim some to the right. Bond Richard and I have hunted small game that revealed a deficiency in that it was hanging at half cock. Uh, further work revealed some problems with the trigger. So we have corrected both. So now we have the gun ready to go out and hunt deer tomorrow. We'll clean it up, we'll load it up, and we'll get it out in the woods. But now this is Hovey Smith reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal. Be ethical, be safe, goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. There were two issues with the lock. The first was that the sear was catching on the half cock notch, and the second was there was not sufficient trigger travel to allow the trigger to contact the sear bar. Now the last was solved by grinding a little from the top of the trigger itself to allow more travel and the contact to be made and this replaced a shim that I had used earlier. To find out more about my books, blogs, and more than 850 videos, go to my website www.hoviesmith.com. To discover how you can start your own businesses anywhere, anytime, at any age, go to createyourownjobsecurity.com. For the latest on my book, movie, and screenplay project, Father of the Grooms, go to fatherofthegrooms.net. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye and God bless.